Hello. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Hong Su, a postdoc in MPI for multidisciplinary science. So I'm very glad to be here to share with you my ongoing project. The title is Self-Supervised Universal Opera Prediction for Prokaryotic Genomic or Metagenomic Data. So uh, this talk is uh, going to focus mainly on the methodology with a few results. Okay, let's start with a few words of the introduction. As we already know, the vast majority of the microbiomes, over 90-90%, cannot be cultivated in a laboratory setting. Uh, therefore, metagenomics has emerged as uh, a valuable approach to study them. However, metagenomics analysis is limited to a very small fraction of functional information. The, micro, uh, the human microbiome, for example, the most intensely studied gene, uh, environment, only about 60% uh, of genes has functional annotations. While in other environments, this fraction can be as low as 10%. Studies have found in prokaryotes, uh, functional, functionally related genes are often organized into operas. For example, in bacteria, uh, more than half of protein coding genes are part of the uh, multi G operas. So, what are operas? As illust illustrated in this figure, operas are a group of genes. They are neighbor genes on the same strand, and uh, the transcription and translation are controlled by a single promoter upstream of the first gene and uh, a terminator downstream of the last gene. So by identifying these operas, the researchers can get clues about the function of, uh, of genes in a particular uh, pathway or biological uh, process. Here I use, use this example to illustrate how, oh sorry, I'm sorry, how operas can help annotate gene functions. So here uh, in this figure, genes A and B in genome X, they are uh, uh, annotated reliably. And these two genes with gene C form an opera. With the annotations of genes A and B, we can predict the function of this opera. And then we can further predict the function of gene C in genome X. And then we can transfer the annotations of the, these genes to their homologous in genome Y. Notably, without the opera information, we cannot annotate the, G, G, the, the function of GC in genome Y because we don't know uh, the function of G, uh, GC in gen, genome X, right? So uh, opera prediction is valuable. There are already many computational tools for opera prediction. However, most of them demand uh, experimental information such as RC data or functional information uh, from like CAG database. This information are not always available, especially for newly sequenced microbiomes. And all of these methods, they, they are not uh, convenient to use. They lack either standalone packages or web servers, or their web servers are too slow to run large, uh, on large scale data set, such as the latest uh, web server Opera Mapper. So motivated by these limitations, we have developed a fast and accurate Opera prediction tool. Uh, this method is only based on uh, two types of data sources. It's in intergenic here. It's uh, intergenic distance and the curved G clusters, which can be de derived from the sequences only. So our method is entirely dependent on experimental or functional information, enabling its application to any prokaryotic genomic or metagenomic data. And we are also working on making a command line software with minimal dependency requir uh, requirements and a web server to make their easier to be used. So uh, let's move on to the two types of data sources used in our method. The first is intergenic distance, denoted at the small the D here. So it's basically the number of base pairs between two neighboring genes. 
by the upper definition, we already know the neighbor genes on the different strat cannot be in the same upper, right? So in this project, we only uh, consider the neighbor genes on the same strat. The, the, the two figures in the left shows the distribution of intergenic distance. So, so I show in these two plots, we can say the, uh, yeah, the orange is for the upright pairs, the blue is for not upright pairs. From these two plots, we can see the neighbor G pairs belonging to the same, uh, same uh, opera tend to exhibit a small intergenic distance. So this feature is very important for opera prediction. The next data source is conserved neighbor genes. So maybe we already know uh, the genes, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, the genes tend to uh, undergo rearrangement relative to each other. So uh, 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 without the, the selective pr uh, pressure. So therefore the genes that cluster together here uh, in multiple genomes are more likely to be a small pro. With these two informations, now we can move on to our method. So uh, the pipeline consists of basically two models, a distance model and a conservation model. Initially, we developed a distance model. This model takes uh, the, uh, uh, a protein fast file predicted by protocol as input, and then it generates the, the probability of uh, uh, all uh, neighboring genes on the same strat. This probability indicating the likelihood of the neighbor genes to be the same, uh, same opera. And then we treat a conservation model. This model takes a relative, oh, sorry, takes a relatively large reference genomes and the query protein file as input. So firstly, we uh, conducted a selection to the uh, initial reference genome dataset to a subset to reduce the redundancy. And then we uh, use space dust uh, to uh, uh, search the query protein against the selected subset to uh, detect the conserved neighboring genes. So space dust is a tool developed uh, by a, a PhD student in our lab. So basically space dust is a modular tool, uh, toolkit uh, for identification the conserved neighboring genes across uh, multiple genomes based on the homology and the conservation of, uh, of a gene neighborhood. So from the uh, space dust, we can calculate a conservation matrix na here named initial matrix. In this matrix, one means uh, for the neighboring genes in the query, there, uh, for, the, for uh, this pair, there is a matched, uh, matched G pair in the reference genome. And then we apply our distance model into the reference genomes to uh, pre, uh, to do the prediction and uh, to refi the initial conservation matrix named uh, here revised conservation matrix. And then we take the, the more confident predictions uh, from the distance model as the pseudo labels uh, to treat a logistic regression model based on the revised conservation matrix. And finally, we incorporate the, the predictions of the distance model into this logist, logistic re regression model as a bias term yielding the final prediction. So now let's move on to the more details of, of our distance model. So we already know for the neighbor genes on the same strat, they are either apronic or not apronic. So uh, our task, the task of this distance model is to determine the probability of the neighboring genes to be the same opera given the intergenic distance. So by applying the distance, uh, the BSC theorem, this probability can be, oh sorry, can be expressed uh, in this equation. So uh, our focus turns to uh, estimate these two probabilities. 
here p of o p yeah the uh, the uh, the probability this is a pro probability it's a fraction of uh, neighboring genes on the same strand to be the opera to be the same opera it can be estimated by the total number of uh, neighboring genes on the different strand and uh, the neighboring genes on the same strand so because yeah now we focus on the uh, estimation of these two probabilities so to estimate these two probabilities, we need to know a list of distance for each case, right? So for the distance, we can easily calculate the distance of the neighbor genes uh, for the, uh, uh, on the uh, same stretch for all the neighbor genes. But because we do not have ground truth and so we don't have labels, Therefore, we don't we don't know which pairs are apronic or which pairs are uh, not apronic. So, uh, we need to uh, we cannot yeah we cannot get this uh, this distance directly the not apronic intergenic distance. So we need to uh, first approximate this not apronic intergenic distance. So let's review the uh, the definition of opera. We already know it's a uh, a group of gene, neighboring genes. They are controlled by a single promoter and a single terminator. So for the not opronic the intergenic distance, we can know this distance contains one pro, uh, one terminator and one promoter. And uh, uh, whereas we have observed. For the convergent, uh, for the, the convergent intergenic distance, it contains two uh, two terminators, and for the divergent intergenic distance, it contains two promoters. So, therefore, we can generate a representative list of the not apparent pairs by the convergent list and the divergent list, right? So, uh, to do this, we basically. Uh, a random uh, a sample, a random combination of a distance in the convergent list and the distance uh, of the uh, divergent list. Then we just calculate uh, arithmetic mean. Uh, then we get uh, uh, this uh, the the representative list of the non-apronic intergenic distance. So now we have two uh, lists of distance, and we can like use the kernel density estimation to estimate the probabilities. Then we get our distance model. So next is the conservation model. This model is inspired by a self-training framework published in 2020. Uh, in the in their uh, self-training framework, first they they treat, uh, they use the label data to treat a teacher model and then use this teacher model to infer the pseudo labels on unlabeled data and then they treat a student model on both labeled and unlabeled data and then make the uh, student as a new teacher and to iterate this process in our case because we already know we don't have any label data right so we take our distance model as a teacher model and then use this distance model to infer the pseudo labels on all uh yeah uh, uh for the all neighboring genes on the same strand then we take the more com we take the more confident half of the pseudo labels to treat a uh, uh, logistic regression model based on the revised conservation matrix and then we combine the distance model and the conservation model to yield the final teacher. So yeah, basically that, that's my uh, approach. So to evaluate the performance of, of our models, we collect seven uh, organisms with well annotated operas. Uh, apart from the well, uh, widely used, well-studied organisms, E. coli and B. subtilis, we also collect seven genomes from OPRA-DB. So here, OP is opera pairs. It's uh, directly extracted, extracted from the annotated OPRAs, not op NOP, because the database only gives you uh, the OPRA annotations. There's no 
uh, non-operating pairs annotations. So we we extracted extracted the non-operating pairs by considering the uh, first gene and the last gene of the operons with each uh, an upstream and the downstream neighboring genes. Yeah. Here, estimated Q is the a fraction of the uh, uh, same strand, the, the, the neighbor, uh, neighboring genes on the same strand to be the same opera, as I just introduced. Annotated Q is equal to the uh, number of OP divided by a number of adjacent pairs. So by, by comparing these two values uh, 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 of E. coli and B. subtilis, uh, we verified the Q value estimation of our methods is accurate and reliable. So therefore we exclude uh, three genomes with uh, annotated Q at least opaque to lower than the estimated Q, which means uh, there is a low completeness of opera annotations. This will result a uh, high occurrence of uh, false uh, false negatives in the extracted non-operating pairs. So here is the performance of our models uh, compared with two available methods. Uh, based on it, this is measured by the precision re uh, recall AUC. Here, opera mapper is uh, a supervised method treated on E. coli and B. subtilis. They using uh, they use the intergenic distance and the fractional relatedness. OFS distance is an unsupervised me method based only on the intergenic distance. So from this figure, we can see this, the results in this figure demonstrate both of our distance model and the combined model uh, consistently out, uh, outperform the, uh, uh, the two other available methods. Even on the here, base subtilis and E. coli, which the opera member are treated on our methods, uh, still achieve a significantly higher AUC. Yeah, so this figure shows the distribution of the distance model and the conservation model. Here, this figure uh, illustrated these two models are complementary to each other. Yeah, to sum up, we have developed a computation computational tool for predicting operas. This tool is unsupervised, therefore no overfitting at all, and our method is more accurate. And because we only use the information derived from sequences only, so our method is entirely dependent on experimental or functional information. And also, we are working on a, a web server and a standalone package, so they will be user friendly. And also, we are uh, working on predicting the operas for more than 4,000 human gut uh, microbiomes. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. One question. So I know you're looking at um, conservation as well as distances. Yes. Why not also look at the sequences? Oh, why? You mean why uh, I only look at the sequences? Or why not? So why don't sequences alone um, inform if there's like a terminator between two genes? Oh, uh, uh, sorry again. So you, you mean why not only looking at the uh, sequences? Uh, sequences between genes? So you have co-op, if you have genes, which you're assuming or trying to predict are co-operonic. Yeah. And between those genes, it's the intergenic region, right? Why not look at the sequence there? Is it difficult to identify that there's a, a unknown terminator there? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, could you explain it again? So let's do this. Sorry, in the interest of time, can we, you know, offline yeah thank you okay i'm yeah. sorry you can come to me